Welcome back to SV Ramble On. We took the boat out this weekend and anchored for a couple of nights. And when we drove out, we noticed uh, the alternator was making voltage, charging the batteries. Uh, we got out, anchored overnight. Uh, went to pick up the next morning and moved to a different spot. And I fired up the engine and it was idling and I heard a weird, like a surge, like the engine went like it really slowed the RPMs really slowed down so I thought it was weird I jumped out looked in the cockpit and noticed that the tachometer wasn't working and uh, the engine was running fine but when I looked at the DC voltmeter we weren't getting any inflow into the battery banks for charging everything was fine we had power uh, the engine was running the starter worked no problems uh, but I know I just noticed we weren't getting any voltage uh, we drove around for a little bit, found another spot, anchored out, and uh, same thing on the way back in on Sunday morning, uh, we noticed that, again, no batteries being charged. Uh, so I figured it was the alternator. Uh, I did some preliminary checks, just making sure we've got voltage at the terminals and voltage at the batteries and panel meter is all reading the same. I... Did some research online, looking into this this actual uh, alternator. This one doesn't, this model number doesn't have diodes in it, so it couldn't have been the diodes that fried. But it's probably the voltage regulator, or there's a fault inside the windings or something. So I'm going to go ahead and take this thing off and see what's up. We had good belt tension. There's no problems with the belt. It's turning like it's supposed to. It's not slipping. There's actually, we get zero belt dust, so... I'm going to have to take this thing off, open it up, troubleshoot it, and figure out what's wrong. See if I need to get a new voltage regulator, or whether the alternator's scrap and we got to throw down the coin for a new Balmar. Alternator voltage check. Oops. 13.25. 13.25 at the batteries. Electron battery monitor. 13.26, 13.27, so pretty close. So the bottom tensioner bolt is half inch on this Perkins. And this is a least Neville, least Neville uh, alternator. It's like a Motorola type alternator. It's made by Prestolite. So you can still get parts for them, but they're just not that easy to come by. I already shot the bolts with a little bit of PB blaster just to loosen them up. So this one comes in from the back and sits on this little bracket here. You can see the belt's loose now. I just got to be able to swing the alternator out of the way enough to get the belt off. The two upper bolts here, the pivot bolts, are 9 sixteenths. So before I get this thing off all the way, I'm going to go ahead and do the back connections. So this is the positive lead that goes to the battery. The wiring here is hinky, and when I did the battery banks, I didn't change the wiring on the alternator. I just led it to the battery charger, the battery terminal. Um, these, when I upgrade to the Balmar, I'm going to put in heavy, this is 6 gauge wire, I'm going to put in like 2 aught wire to go along with the rest of the cabling on the boat. This is the gray wire, this gray wire here is the tachometer feed that sends the signal every time the alternator rotates, I think it's like 12 pulses per rotation or something like that. It sends a signal to the tachometer and the tachometer interprets that into how many RPMs the engine's turning based on the pulley diameter of the alternator. So just spinning the spinning the pulley doesn't look like the bearings are bad. It's a little, a little rusty. I could use a good cleaning at least. I'm trying to see if I can maybe get a $40 voltage regulator that might limp this thing along for a little while longer until we decide to throw down the 
what is it? It's probably going to be 1500 2000 bucks to do the alternator pulley conversion kit for the Perkins, as well as the alternator and voltage regulator. But the connections don't look great. You know, I really never paid much attention to this alternator. Never gave it any servicing or anything. But I guess now it's time to pay the piper. So for the alternator, you can see it's all really green inside. There's a lot of corrosion and problems and stuff, so I'm gonna start taking, start with taking off the voltage regulator. Then I got a little Tupperware bin and I took a bunch of pictures of the back so I can get the wires, everything connected correctly to the right terminals. So I split this up. These terminals are where the hot and the negative to the battery were connected. So this is the negative battery to the voltage regulator. Positive battery to the negative to the positive battery to the voltage regulator. And then these are I think it's a field wi field wire. This one went to the tack. You can attach the, the yellow wires on both sides of the voltage regulator can attach to the tachometer wire. And this voltage regulator is actually adjustable. There's a little screw here and you can adjust the output voltage on the regulator while it's running. So according to the little sticker on the back of the, just above the voltage regulator, it says this is ignition protected. And there's a little, like a little felt gasket in here. That felt gasket is what keeps the sparks off the brushes. So the voltage regulator is potted, it's not serviceable, but this thing needs a lot of cleaning. I'm gonna probably have to take it down to the shop and clean it out, but I kinda wanna open it up and see what's going on first. So these are the voltage regulator brushes. They go to the, the brushes on the alternator, these leads, and they're very, very stiff. Okay, there's one green lead. On marinehowto.com, that guy Mainsail is, uh, he has these conversion kits that blank these out and convert this to an, you can convert these alternators to an external regulator. A little conversion kit and what could happen is if you have one of these and you're not ready to throw down for the $800 or $900 alternator, you can actually convert it to an external regulator, install the $300 Balmar voltage regulator, which is completely programmable. It's a multi-step uh, multi uh, voltage regulator. And then you can still use this alternator with the totally solid state voltage regulator. So what you got here, I got a lot of dust from the brushes. The carbon brushes, they throw off dust. You can see it's all black and carbonized in here. Um, it looks like once I get the back of the case off, it might not, uh, doesn't look like it's in too bad a shape, but I'll go ahead and take the brushes off to see what those look like. You can see the carbon dust on the uh, on this uh, ignition proof little felt gasket. So these things are spring loaded carbon brushes. So they're gonna they're gonna want to pop out. Brushes actually look like they're in good shape. So this is the brush assembly. Those are the two carbon brushes that ride on the motor shaft right there and okay so they don't come flying out you do have to put a pin in there to retract them so that you can get this get them all put back together but these actually don't look too bad and I can probably you can clean them up with like really fine grit sandpaper but considering the shape of the rest of the alternator I'm guessing at some point somebody was inside here and put these brush this brush in.
because there's a lot of length left in these. These are spring loaded and there's a lot of length left on them. So the brushes look fairly new. I think somebody changed these previously before we bought the boat. Well, this ain't gonna do it. No, this thing, the, the strap wrench is just slipping. That ain't gonna touch it. It's just gonna dig down inside the pulley and slide around too. No dice there. All right. So don't tell anybody I use channel locks on the V pulley, but I used channel locks on the V pulley and wedged it and got this thing loose. Didn't chew up the pulley too bad. Just left little marks in it. So there you go. Uh, yeah, I can take a grinder and clean that up a little bit. Here's the fan. There's a keyway and a bushing. So right after the battery died on the camera, I was able to tap the case apart and I mean as you can see from the towel I'm working on this thing was exposed to some serious saltwater spray I'm guessing something happened and maybe something from the raw water side splattered everywhere inside the engine compartment and just coated this thing with rust I can't separate the uh, the front case I guess I can. I can press it out. I can take it down to the shed and pop it out. But the armature is just complete. I'm surprised this thing was making any amps at all. But right inside of here, the bearing is just rusted to the shaft on the, the back bearing. The front bearing is rusted to the inside of the case here. And this is an aluminum housing. When they do the windings, the varnish on the, uh, they varnish everything and it's flaking away from the windings and it's just everything is just covered in rust i'm sure so something probably just shorted out and the alternator just kicked the bucket do we get a a cheap 90 or 100 amp alternator maybe convert it to an external voltage regulator and hope for the best or do we just go all out and get the good 150 amp programmable Balmar alternator with the V-belt pulley kit and just be done with it? I mean, eventually that's what we're going to do before we take off. So, but anyway, thanks again for watching and give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. Check out some of our other videos on all the other refit projects we've been doing. And if you got a comment or a question, let us know. And we'll get back to you. You can also reach us with a keep in touch email on our website svramblon.com and you can send us an email directly and that usually gets a quicker response than comments down below on YouTube but we do try and stay on top of uh, answering the comments below so thanks again.